Welcome to the Exploring Unschooling podcast. I'm Pam Larickia, longtime unschooling mom and author. Join me and my wonderful guests for interviews, information, and inspiration about unschooling and living joyfully with your family. You can find the episode show notes, your free introductory ebook, What is Unschooling?, and lots more information at livingjoyfully.ca. And here's the show. Hello, everyone. I'm Pam Larickia, and this is episode number 80 of the podcast. It's the 12th of July, 2017, as I record this intro. And my guest this week is Kelly Nicole. Kelly is a 22-year-old grown unschooler, and I had so much fun chatting with her about her unschooling experience. Uh, We talk about her family's road to unschooling, how her passion for acting developed, what she appreciates most about growing up unschooling, her advice for unschooling parents just starting out on this journey, and lots more. Uh, As a personal update this week, things are pretty quiet around here as we all slip back into our routines, and that's really nice too. Oh, and I wanted to give you guys a heads up. The next week, Emma and I will be chatting about the book, The Gardener and the Carpenter, what the new science of child development tells us about the relationship between parents and children, which is by Alison Gopnik. I really enjoyed the book, and I'm looking forward to diving into it with Emma. And I want to say thank you to everyone who has chosen to support the show on Patreon. And a big, big welcome to new patrons Russell Schick, Megan Valns, Gemma Carruthers, and Kathleen Glossop. And because we hit our next goal, the show patrons have chosen the platform for our private group, and I'll be setting it up this week. I'm excited to connect more closely with you guys because you inspire me. And I love that you're helping me share unschooling information with anyone who wants to explore this wonderful lifestyle with their family. If you'd like to support the show, even for as little as a dollar a month, check out the Exploring Unschooling page at patreon.com. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash exploring unschooling. And this week's quote is from Kelly. The most wonderful thing about being unschooled is that I was able to pursue what I loved because I loved it. Now, think about that for a second. She didn't say because it's lucrative or well-respected, and it may well be, but those are things that follow our choices, not direct them. She said, because I loved it. Full stop. That was enough of a reason to dive in wholeheartedly. For parents, this is where trust comes in and the realization that we do not have a crystal ball to see the future. We truly don't know where things may lead. Yet when our children are freely pursuing things because they love them, interesting and unpredictable things can and will happen. Beautiful things that will make us gasp. The things our children choose to pursue as they grow up may or may not lead to their paid work in adulthood. And that's not the point. Pursuing the things they love, the things that strike closest to their hearts, will help shape them into the person they are most drawn to be, which in turn will inform all their choices, including the choices they'll make as paid work becomes something they are interested in pursuing. And how does it do that? Well, they will understand themselves so much better, their likes and their dislikes, strengths and weaknesses, through pursuing the things they love. The time our children spend pursuing those things is never wasted time. And now, on to the interview with Kelly. Hi everyone, I'm Pam Larickia from livingjoyfully.ca and today I'm here with Kelly Nicole. Hi Kelly! Hi Pam, thanks so much for having me! Thank you so much for joining me. And just to let everyone know, I came across Kelly online and had a lot of fun watching some of her YouTube videos. Oh, gosh. (laughs) Yeah. She will (laughs) also be speaking at the Free to Be Unschooling Conference in Phoenix, Arizona in September. Now, I'm really looking forward to chatting with her about her unschooling experience. And to get us started, Kelly, can you share with us a bit about you and your family? Yes. um, Well, I am a professional actress now for over over nine years. Oh, my goodness. I I can't believe it sometimes. Um, And I I love it. And, you know, the only reason I was able to really succeed and go so far is because of my mom unschooling and because of her continuous support. 
Um, and when I'm not acting, I'm doing kids' birthday parties as characters and teaching acting to kids and teaching improv to kids and directing children's theater. And just, I, but I'm very grateful because everything I do relates to what I love doing. So it's just, it's just a blessing. And um, uh, my family right now, my family is my mom who unschooled us and she is a superhero. She is amazing. She is, I mean, the most incredible woman you'll ever meet in your life. If I, can I talk about her for a second? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, I adore that woman. Oh, my gosh. I So she was, um, like, born and raised in California, well, Ohio to California. And before she had kids, she was the manager of, like, the Burbank Airport, the LAX Airport, like, a, one of the first female managers. Wow. And she was amazing and fantastic. And then she had kids. And she didn't have me until she was about 40. And so I, I think I'm very grateful. For, I, I get scared sometimes. You're like, oh, yeah, my grandmother's that age. I'm like, well, my mom's that age right now. And, you know, because she's she had me a little later in life and it worries me. But, you know, I have a lot of friends right now who their parents, they want to, like, kick them out right away because they had them really young. My mom goes, I did everything I wanted to do. I traveled. I, you know, I experienced life. And now I'm just about my kids. You know, I want to have you guys have a great life. And, you know, that's what I'm about. So she quit her job. And became a stay-at-home mom uh, to my older sister and I and hasn't looked back. And, oh, my gosh. And then there's more I'll go into in a bit. But um, then there's my sister who's older than me. And she's also a superhero. I adore her. And she's my best friend. I I love the movie Frozen. And mm-hmm. I always say we're, like, Anna and Elsa because she's, like, Elsa because she likes to stay in and, you know, do her own things and stuff. But I'm, like, Anna because I have, like, run out and say hi to everybody and stuff. So... <laughs> Um, probably because I love that movie so much, but she actually, fun fact, she is autistic and, um, she's pretty high functioning, but, um, one of the reasons we were unschooled in the beginning is because of her autism, because it's just so hard in the public school system for them to, uh, accommodate that and mm-hmm. handle that. Excuse me. And they have like 50 kids in a classroom and it's, it's just so difficult. And then, um, Right now, she just got approved for disability. Yay! Yay. We've been fighting for three years because she, she's not able to drive or work or anything. So it's been a huge blessing. And she's actually engaged um, to Talon, who is pretty much, he's my brother. And we actually met him in the unschooling group. And they knew each other for like eight years before they got together. And I, then the big thing with, with them was she was like, you know I'm autistic, right? And he's like, I know that, and I love you, and I've known you for eight years, so it's not like I'm expecting anything different, and they're just the cutest. So that's the four of us, and we we all live together and support each other in every way possible. Wow, that sounds awesome. And yeah, so the- I have a lot. I just I love my family. Yeah. I'm so grateful for them. <laughs> Frozen uh, was a pretty popular movie here too, even though my kids are old. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Confession time. I am sure you've seen in my YouTube videos. I have a Frozen themed bedroom. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's ridiculous, and all my friends are like, "What is wrong with you? How old are you?" But I, I mean, that movie. I think it really hit like really close to home with me because I, I didn't talk about it yet, but my, I, I did have my, my biological father who was around till I was 19, he was very abusive, um, verbally, financially, emotionally, and a little physically. And so because of that, there were a lot of like, you know, he would fight with my mom and my sister would take me to the room and we'd play games together. And it was kind of like the, do you want to build a snowman thing? And we became really close because of that. And then when she started to kind of shut down because of everything going on, then I would like knock on her door and be like, let's play a game. Let's do this. And like, I just so much that just reminds like that movie. I was like, that's my life. But just, you know, without the ice powers and yeah, <laughs> <that's> that. stuff. <laughs> but yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, uh, I showed one of the videos to, uh, cause, uh, my daughter was visiting last week. So the the kids were all hanging out here, and I showed them. Dad sat a frozen pillow because <laughs> my <laughs> my son, I think it was his seventeenth birthday, was like a frozen theme. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, I feel like you, me, and your son would be just BFFs. I really think so. <laughs> but anyway, how fantastic! Is that? <laughs> um, I thought maybe you could talk. Tell us a little bit about uh, what your family's move to unschooling looked like. Yes. So 
Um, you know, growing up, we, we went to public school. I went to public school until, um, sixth grade is when, so I, fifth grade was my last year and sixth grade, she took me home. And the reason unschooling was an option is because my, my mom had said, like, I am never teaching. I don't think I can do that. And, um, my, my sister who has autism, she started to completely shut down because there was no accommodation for her. There was no like she wasn't learning. She was being bullied. She was having sensory overloads. Mm-hmm. And it got to the point where she went completely nonverbal and would only bark and growl and would hide under tables. And, um, you know, it, the biggest block was was my biological father, who was like, my kids, they are going to be stupid homeschoolers. Or they're better, you know, because he was just a jerk. And um, my mom finally put her foot down and was like, my daughter is suffering. Like my children are not doing good and this is affecting their health and their lives. And listen, I don't care what you do. You can leave for all I care, but I'm taking my children home Mm -hmm. and I'm homeschooling them. And it was a really big fight and it was a very scary thing. Um, And then Jackie, my sister was homeschooled for a year before I was. And I, you know, I had a lot of trouble in school. I, I was bullied a lot. I was extremely shy. And I, um, I, I was just awkward. I was an awkward kid and I didn't learn very well. Like I would go through the motions and I would write down the answers. And then a week later you could ask me what I learned and I had just thrown it away because I didn't really get what I, you know, you're there for the test and that's it. And the test is over and now it's done. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when I told my mom, like, mom, I think I'm having trouble at school. Then, you know, we went through that and then she brought me home and it was like magic. Oh. That's <laughs> awesome. I know. So, it's like so my you, little story. you went to the end of fifth grade. So, and your sister I was did. home for the year before that. She was, I think, her second year of junior high. Uh, and then she yeah. was taken. But she, when we came home, we had to start from the beginning, like from addition. Like I knew basic addition, but like for her, she had just shut down. So mm-hmm. she like had to relearn everything. And for me, I, I like would get to the multiplication, which is where I was really stuck on. And I would just have his, I would just go hysterical. I would just start crying. I was like, I'm stupid. I can't do it because you know, in schools, they, if you don't get a good grade, you can't do it. Then they reprimand you and they tell you you're not good enough. And so I took that to heart and I was like, Oh my gosh. So it was like a whole, it was a whole, I, I'm God bless my mom. <laughs> Uh, experience with she had one child who was autistic and like hiding under the covers during school another who you'd mentioned math and I ever reading or science or anything I just start crying and I mean oh my gosh I don't know how she did it yeah I know because my kids um when they left school they were uh like nine seven and four so uh, my eldest was in grade four and the youngest was just in in junior kindergarten but yeah that first year um, well, as, as we moved into unschooling, um, to, to mention anything that seemed like a school subject, even if, mm-hmm. even if that's, wasn't what it was meant to, if it looked like school, if it looked yes. like a worksheet, if it looked like anything similar, it, it was, it was like, like such a almost terrifying physical reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, it's so like, it's just, it's so, I know it's, it's so sad to me because learning really should be fun. And that's my number one thing. Even when I teach acting classes, I, you know, the kids should be having fun. They should do this because they love it because they want to. And I feel like so much of school people hate because it's, you know, not fun and the teachers don't make it fun or, or enjoyable. And it's like, do this math sheet. I've, I've seen, I've met different, you know, moms and I've done like, you know, co-classes with our kids my age, you know, through homeschooling, and they made it so much fun. I'm like, oh, I like this. You know what I mean? And then I realized, mm-hmm. wait a second, this is that thing I was afraid of. <laughs> but yeah, we actually, when she first brought us home, we were doing online school. Mm-hmm. And um, that didn't work because it's kind of the same, you know, yeah. kind of curriculum thing, which was hard. And it was the same thing of I would go through the motions, and like answer the questions. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'm done. Okay, I guess that's over. So that didn't work. And then we went to kind of a, a curriculum like book plan and that didn't work. And finally my mom was like, you know what? We're just going to do it. We're just going to figure it out. We're going to do our own way. And I mean, she tried everything. I am like, and I feel so bad for her because 
Jackie would respond to things differently than I would. And so sometimes it would be the same subject, but she'd have to teach us both in different ways. So we understood it. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Um, and like, it got to the point where like with math, with multiplication, there was this like story and instead of like 22, it was dirty shoe and it would go into the story about a dirty shoe and how the shoe got dirty. And then like, they go past like through all these numbers and then, um, it, the, the numbers would then have a story together. Like 22 dirty shoe would have a number with, um, a story with seven, which was heaven and about the dirty shoes went to heaven and it was something like that and it would then relate to the answer and as odd as that was um it was just it, it worked for us you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah the, the different um things were like the, i had friends who thought it was the stupidest thing that we you know had these rhymes about shoes and heaven and the sea and stuff but for some reason that really worked for my sister and i like we just like yes that's how it goes and now we can do math and so it's, it's, I love, what I love about unschooling so much is it's really to each their own. You teach the child how they learn, which is, I think is the most beautiful thing because so many people are put into boxes and when you get creative and when you really, um, you know, when you are really attentive to the child's needs, it, it, it just, it just shows, you know what I mean? It shows in how confident they are and how much they excel and how much they love what they're doing, you know? Yeah, I think that's one of the the biggest things. Like for me, watching watching my kids was um, because you were just you were doing things that they were interested in, and you were helping them figure out ways to figure out what it was that they wanted to learn as they were yeah. pursuing whatever it was they were doing. It was, you know, I I did not realize how like beautiful and fun and easy learning could be yeah. you know what I mean oh and especially fun especially yeah, fun like we would exactly. we would still have read aloud and if she my mom thought we weren't paying attention she would be like so she's doing the story of Cinderella right and she'd be like and then Cinderella went down but she broke her ankle on the way down the stairs so she prayed to the three blind mice and the three blind mice and like start making these things up and we'd be like wait a second what <laughs> just to make sure we were paying attention but it's, I mean and I think it's great too because I am a huge advocator for homeschooling, unschooling, because you get to be with your children and with your family. Mm -hmm. Like when you're in the school system, you don't see your family ever. You don't really like, except for like a few hours at night and that's doing homework and then going to bed. And then like, you don't really get to be with them when you're unschooling. You're, you're getting to know your child for who they are and you're creating memories and moments that, you know, Kids grow up really fast. And next thing you know, you'll blink and they'll be 27 and they're married and they're not living with you anymore. And like, it's, it's, it's nice to have that time. I know for me, it was nice to have that time with my mom and my sister because we're just, we're so close because of it. And I am so grateful for that. I know so often when I um, ask, uh, like I do 10 questions episodes with uh, experience, like most of them, I think their kids are, are older. But, you know, what? that was one of the huge surprises when we began on school. Like, I pulled my kids out of school, and at first I thought I was replacing school. You know, we're going to do this homeschooling, yeah. unschooling thing instead of school. But soon enough, it it grew so far beyond, you know, the focus on learning. You realize you don't even have to focus on learning or worry about learning. Yeah. You're just having fun every day and you realize that that learning happens right just just by well, living and, and and the relationships become like this thing that you did not expect that you would get out yeah. of this and and the relationships are so connected and powerful and beautiful and that was just one of the yeah. nicest surprises for me right well and there's two things that are really great about that is one I'm teaching um right now and one of the students is like She's seven years old and she's like, I can't wait till I'm out of college and I never have to learn again. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, sweetie, I don't mean to like, you know, burst your bubble, but you're never done learning. And mm -hmm. no matter where you go in life, you'll always be learning. She gives me the most like dreaded look and goes, I don't know if I want to live in a world like that. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, it's okay. It'll be okay. <laughs> um, oh, shoot. What was the thing I was going to say was... um. Well, but learning being fun, and I oh, I can't remember it now, but it was, 
Oh, goodness. What were you just saying? You were saying about the time with, oh, that's it. My friends. Okay, homeschooling. I love unschooling, especially because you learn how to do everyday things. Mm -hmm. Like we would learn multiplication and then how to use a vacuum and how to use the washer and dryer, how to cook for yourself, how to, you know, do a budget and those kind of things. And I have a friend who is in college and I went to visit her and um, she has this huge pile of clothes on her chair. And I'm like, are you going to get those? She goes, no, no, my mom's going to. And she's been there for three months on it by her own. And she just stops and goes, my mom's not here to do my laundry. I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. And they keep like, they might, my friends say they, they don't know how to cook meals and they don't know how to do these things for themselves. And so it's funny because I'll be at their house and I'm like, oh, you should vacuum. And they're like, I don't know how to use the vacuum. I'm like, you don't know how to vacuum your house? Mm. So I think it's another, you know, great thing is you learn, you know, besides just the, the basics of school, of of reading and writing and everything, take, um, you learn everyday things like how to start a dishwasher and all, you know, <laughs> Things that seem silly, but really you use a lot more often than division. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, because you're just you're living, right? <laughs> These things exactly. Come up. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? They're not that hard to to learn and figure out. It, you know, it just happens one day. Oh, geez, you know, can can you load the dishwasher or somebody unloads it? You know, you just pick mm-hmm. that up when you have the time to yeah. um to live together and to be in at home together like like you were saying well, before so much of the time is spent in school and homework and then sleep mm-hmm. you don't have the time for those things to come up in your life right exactly and i was thinking to myself today i was at walmart and i was getting like some food or something for the house and i used my credit card and i thought to myself I remember the first time i I did not want, you know, I was younger, I did not want a credit card. I didn't know how to use it. And I was stressed out about it. And my mom had to teach me. And it was just hard the first couple of times. And now it's just like an everyday thing. And it, it shows, like, it's how far you come. You know what I mean? Like, the first time you do anything, you're always going to be nervous about it. You're always mm-hmm. going to be, you know, you're, you're unsure you've never done it before. Um, but I think the great thing about unschooling is I know that if I ever have a question, I have my teacher right there. I have my mom, you know, I have my, I can send her a text or give her a call and, She's there, you know, Mm -hmm. because it goes back to the relationship, right? That Mm -hmm. that relate connected relationship where you're you're comfortable, happy to ask questions and, you know, you're not going to, you know, be made fun of or felt feel stupid about for asking questions or anything. Yeah, we had friends um, over the years over is my whole life who would run away to our house. Mm hmm. Or neighbors' kids who would run away to our house because they wanted to talk to our mom. Yeah. Because they said my parents won't understand. They're gonna be mad at me. And my mom was like, "Okay, let's talk." And she like listened and she talked with them. And then she was like, "Okay, I think we should call your mom. You're feeling better now." And then she'd be like, "Hey, so you're you just so you know your son or daughter is here, and this is what happened." And you know, but like she always created a safe environment, not just for me, but for yeah. really everybody because she it was like a no judgment zone. It was, you know, let's just talk about it. Let's, um, you know, let's just go take it a step at a time and we'll figure it out and mm-hmm. then go from there. Wow, that sounds awesome. Yeah. And and that's, that is such, like you said, they, they will, pe- people are attracted to that because, you know, when somebody will treat yeah. them like a human being and talk to them like a human being, yes, you know, without that judgment uh, piece and just help them figure things out. You know, well, that's it's funny, not like I... I got the answer. I've got the answer. Like it's once it's mm-hmm. not a confrontation and it's a conversation instead. Well, and it's not about who's right or who's wrong. Exactly. It's just figuring yeah. it out. Exactly. And it, it's funny. I had a student. Um, I I was on TV last year. I played a murderer. It's very scary, but it was a lot of fun. And um, one of my students was like, I want to watch it. I want to watch it. I want to watch it. And like, you know, there's like fake blood but it's you know I'm playing a murderer and I don't you know <laughs> he was like 12 years old so I said and the mom was like no 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 so I said okay mom here's the link to it you watch it first and then see if you know because I think every every you know kid is different like I know I had some yeah. families who were like they wouldn't let their kids watch uh, you know like PG-13 movies until they were 16 but my mom like you know when I was like eight my sister was watching these movies my mom was like okay you know what you're gonna see them you'll be at friends houses so let's talk about it Let's mm-hmm. talk about what's going on. Let's talk about what's happening in the movies. You know, you understand and you know, it's not like this 
scary, crazy, exciting. It just, it just is, and that's okay. So again, I was like, let, let mom decide. And he came back the next week to class and he goes, I was most surprised because you didn't have a different voice. No. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, you know, adults usually have this kid voice. And <gasps> when I was watching you, you talk exactly like you talk to me, exactly like you talk in class. You just talk to us. And I never really realized that until I saw, you know, you on film. And I was like, wait, she doesn't have like a voice she's putting on for us. And I was like, well, no, you're a person, you know? And that was always a big thing is I, I, people tell me I'm really good with kids. I, I mean, hopefully I work with kids like every day. <laughs> um, but the biggest thing I tell people is I'm like, don't treat them like kids, treat them like human beings. They respect their opinions, respect their wants and their needs and talk to them like they're, like they're humans. Like I hated that when I was a kid and they'd be like, how are you, Kelly? Did you have a good day today? And you're like, I can understand. Like, why are you talking to me like that? Um, and so I just talk to kids, you know, I, I talk to them like I talk to you and I, um, you know, I talk, they, they're like, I have, uh, one girl who I adore and she tells me I'm the big sister she never had. And I love her so much. And I have students who have come early and stayed late to class because they need to talk about like something going on at home. And I'm like, okay, yeah, they just need to talk to someone. And they're like, well, Kelly's so nice. And Kelly's like a teacher, but she's also my friend and she doesn't talk down to me, mm -hmm. you know? And I kind of feel like in a way I picked, I picked that up from my mom because it was, it's never about judging people or, you know, what's right or what's wrong. It's about how are you feeling mm -hmm. and what are the steps to take to make things okay? And anyway, but <laughs> I just want to do a whole tangent there, <laughs> but, um, yeah, just the biggest thing is just talking to people like they're people and talking to kids like they're people. Because I, I don't know, I just noticed a huge difference in in, pe in kids responding and how they work mm -hmm. and how they play. And um, I know that's like my biggest thing I, I tell people. And they're like, how do you do it? And I'm like, J they're just people. They're just they're tiny people. people. And they're discovering who they are. And they're figuring things out. And they're young. And they're teenagers. And they're kids. And, you know, but they're people. And mm -hmm. they have their, they're just like, oh, it's beautiful. And that's, you know, I love acting. It's like the beauty of creating a whole nother person. It's the beauty of bringing someone to life, how they think, how they move, how they speak, why they do the things they do. Um, and that is a human person. And it's easy sometimes, you know, because only you think in your own mind, you only hear your own voice. And so it's hard to think, you know, there's certain times in your life, I'm sure you've thought like, people, these people can't be real because I don't even know what they're doing and why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. But I like dissect that for a living mm -hmm. and so many, so many parents, I think it's because also my, my biological father was like that, you know, they want their kids to be a certain way yeah. and they have certain expectations on their kids. And if it doesn't meet that expectation, if they're not a certain way, they get mad and they get angry and they lash out and they're disappointed. Um, like people don't always go into having kids realizing that they're going to be their own separate consciousness and their own separate human being you know mm -hmm. and it's not always gonna be what mom and dad wants like you could be like i want a doctor for a child and the kid's like i'm gonna be a janitor that's my dream you know and you could think why do you want to be a janitor but that's what your kid loves and that's what they want to do and so it's your job as a parent to now support that does that make yeah. sense yeah oh absolutely i think that's a huge thing you know when we when you first have a child we have uh, uh, you have a picture, you know, everybody's like, well, I want, you mm -hmm. know, I want to have the, the perfect child, you know, what, and, yeah. and that can be different from parent to parent, right? Although, you know, a lot of uh, society's messages get uh, flooded in there, right? You know, oh, so yeah. even, even if we growing up weren't able to live up to that, you know, it's like, okay, I can do it, but I want to help my kid do it, right? Be the, be the yeah, exactly. Student, the, the, you know, the, the, the wonderful child that, that can excel, et cetera, et cetera. So, and you want to like pass on like, Oh, I love doing this. So you'll love doing yeah, this. And yeah. like, we don't love doing this. You're like, why not? <laughs> that's it. They're not clones. I mean, I, I have a talk exactly. that said, said kids are, that's called kids aren't clones. You know, I love that <laughs> because that's it. You know, they, they aren't our chance for a do over on child, mm -hmm. right? They are people. Of They're their own. Yeah. Yeah, and I loved your story of the of uh, the boy who came and said you sound the same. <laughs> I'm still like, oh, marveling over that. I'm like, that isn't that so great? Perfect, right? Because you don't think I don't think about those things, you know. Mm. And I just I'm like, oh, it's just, they're just they're tiny people and they're learning their own lives. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, there's a filter because they're kids. Like, you're not gonna be yeah, like, yeah. hey, what's up? You know, like, you know. <laughs> um, 
but it's you know you don't talk down to them and you don't treat them like they're like they're idiots because they're mm-hmm. not kids are so smart and i work with them every day kids are so smart and so intelligent and the we thing is they're fresh brains you know what i mean mm-hmm. someone said to me they're 12 and they said um i feel like i'm not creative and i said why do you feel that way and then she goes I feel that way because when I was little, I had all these new ideas that no one had ever thought of before. And now I'm having these ideas, but everyone's done them before. I'm like, well, you know what happened? And she goes, what? And I said, what happened is when you were little, you hadn't seen all the ideas. You hadn't seen what everyone else had done. And so every idea to you was new and exciting and creative. You're still having those creative ideas. You're still having those new, fresh ideas that are coming to you but someone else has also done that and that's okay. But don't ever doubt yourself. Don't doubt that creativity. Don't put yourself down for feeling like you didn't do it first because the world has been around for millions of years and humans have been around for millions of years of growing and, and, you know, evolution. There's really like, in a way, there's no originality left because there's been so many years of people doing the same things over and over again. Never give up on an idea because you feel like it's not the first time it's been thought of. Mm-hmm. If you love an idea, if you think of a creative idea, go for it. Roll with it. I mean, that's why there's formulas in acting and in books people like to read and in movies people like to watch because people like those ideas. So just because you're not the first one to think of it, it doesn't mean it's not a great creative idea. I could dive into this with you too. <laughs> I know. That's I know. Awesome. I so similar. <laughs> <laughs> and, and true, because I mean, get, get take 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 a creative like a book idea and if you had like three different people write that same story but it would come out so differently <gasps> just because they're bringing themselves to it it's it's coming through them oh my gosh like, it Pam, would work out so- <laughs> don't even do not okay so i i love acting i love what i do i i literally like the other day i was talking about it with my mom and i just started like jumping as i was talking she's yeah, like why are you jumping i'm like because i just i just get so excited about it and i was saying like Oh, oh, I just love it. I was telling my students this because they were saying like, you know, when you go into an audition in a professional world, oh my God, it's the worst. Because you go in and you're waiting in the waiting room with 50 other people who look exactly like you, exactly like you. And honestly, they all look prettier than you. And you're like, they're probably all better than me and more talented, mm-hmm. and you know. And you have to like get those thoughts out of your mind and go in and you do the audition and the callback and whatever and, you know, see what happens. But I was telling, um, I was telling my mom this and, and some of my students I tell them all the time is, no one will ever be you, okay? Mm-hmm. There's a reason there are different actors in the world because you could have, I could, I could give you, I could give you and your friend the same scene, the same scene that's about you're late for school and you spill coffee on your clothes and you're running and you know and you're stressed, and one person's gonna go in and do it completely differently, and you could make the same mental choices, mm-hmm. but it will still come out completely different because it's you yeah. and because it's it's just different and new and unique and that's what and like I had oh gosh I had uh someone uh, my friend in college there her she's in graphic design her her teacher said you're not meant to be an artist and I was livid oh. I was livid and I was like do don't you dare and she's a fantastic I love her art uh, don't you dare ever give up on art ever because of that stupid teacher who should not be teaching art is relative and I always oh, said this come. I'm sorry, I just I love this stuff. I was just talking <laughs> to my student, like literally this last week. And they were saying, we sat down together and we were, I like to draw. My sister's a professional cartoonist, and why does not, you know, she doesn't make money. She likes to draw basically. She's really, really good at it. Um, and so I grew up drawing because I wanted to draw with her. So I sit down with the kids, and the kids are all like, Miss Kelly, Miss Kelly, come draw with us. I'm like, yeah, okay. So we're sitting in a circle drawing, and one of the students goes, I just can't do it. I'm like, you can't do what? She goes, I just can't, I can't draw. I'm like, well, why not? She goes, it's not going to be good enough. Yeah. And that broke my heart. Mm-hmm. And because that was me, you know, growing up. And I said to her, I said, I said to the group who's sitting around me, I said, what makes an actor good or bad? And they, they stopped and they're looking at me. Like, I'm going to tell them, like, no, I want, what do you think it is? One of the kids kind of tentatively raises their hand and she goes, nothing. I said, exactly. I said, what makes a singer good or bad? And they're like, nothing. I said, what makes an artist good or bad? They said nothing. I'm like, do you know why? They're like, no. I said, because art is relative. That's why there are so many different actors and so many different singers and so many different artists. I personally think Picasso is weird. 
I don't mm-hmm. care for Picasso. I'm like, I don't like it. But there are people who pay millions of dollars to have a Picasso painting in their house. Mm-hmm. Then there's art that I think is really cute and cool. And then there's elitists who are like, that's not real art and all that stuff. That's why I said, did you ever see a movie and all your friends love it, but you just don't like it? Yeah. Because <laughs> you have different tastes. Mm-hmm. We ever heard a song or a singer that like, I love Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift. And I have friends who are like, I don't like Taylor Swift. They're like, yeah, I have that too. I'm like, because everyone likes different things. That's why there are so many different arts. There's so many different artists. Because if we all like the same thing, we don't need one actor and one singer and one painter. But because we're all different people with different minds, with different creativity, with different imaginations, we all like different things, which then opens up the world for all different kinds of artists. And that's the biggest thing I had to learn as an actor because I'm a perfectionist and I wanted to be perfect. I'm like, that was bad. And my teacher was like, it's no bad or good in acting. There just is. There's things you think worked well and things you think didn't work well, but there's no just good or bad. This isn't a math equation. There's no right or wrong answer. You're creating a whole character. You're, you know, there's steps to it and there's homework to do for it. And there's, you know, building up to it and learning your lines and learn, knowing the character. But when you go down and you do it, there's no bad answer because you are just being, you are creating, you are learning, you are an experience when you are this character. So there's no like, and that's what I love about acting. There's no good or bad. There's things people like more and they like less. There's actors who won Academy Awards and I think they did a crappy job. And I'm like, why did they get that role? But then there's actors who I would just cry over, oh my gosh, like rewind the scene 20 times for this one look in their eye. My, my friends are like, Nobody cares, Helen. Look, but no, all the expressions. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm going into another tangent. I'm sorry. I I love what I do so much, but yeah, I oh, art I totally is relative. <laughs> like never just and if anyone's listening to this, never ever ever let anyone tell you what you can or can't be. And that's the biggest thing. And that's something I still struggle with. I'm only 22, and I still, you know, you get down on yourselves. And my mom is 61, and she still gets down on herself. And and never let anyone else define you. And that was such a huge thing because I had an abusive person in my life who was my father. And that's supposed to be one of the people who supports you unconditionally, who's always there for you. Yet I had that person consistently judging me, telling me verbally, I'm not good enough. Telling me that I I can't do that. It's not a real job. It's not a real this. Um, You're a disappointment and all those things, not from an outside source, but from like a father, Mm -hmm. And I had to work through that. And even every day, there are days I still hear his voice in my head and I have to fight through that because you can't let anyone, like no one can limit you. You are your own limits. I mean, I always say, just go for it. Even if you, even if you're going to fail, why not? I love to sing and I feel like I'm not the best singer in the world. And I had to work really hard to get to where I am even now singing. I have some singing covers on my YouTube channel that you can hear and, um, you know, I think it's, it's pretty good. I'm actually proud of myself now, but it's still, you know, I, I know I'm not the best in the world. But every time I wanted to give up, I would stop and I said, okay, Kelly, you know, humans live to like 100 years, you know, approximately. So you're 70 years old and you look back on your life, excuse me, you look back on your life and you didn't continue to train yourself in singing. And now what? You just never sang again. You know, you, you love it. Are you just going to stop and give up? And then I'm like, no, you're not going to stop and give up. You're going to do it. And then you just keep going. And same with acting. Like someone says, what are you going to do if you don't make it to, um, you know, make as an actor? I said, well, I'm going to die trying. Cause that's, that's it. You have one life. That's my number one love of life is, is doing that. And so it's like, I'm going to keep going until like something physically stops me. Um, because again, what if I'm 70 years old and look back and I thought, oh, well, I could have been an actor. But instead I chose to work a desk job and do all this stuff. And now I have all these regrets in my life. And oh God, I have so many tangents. Jim Carrey, last one, I swear. Um, Jim Carrey is the most beautiful thing. His dad was a comedian Mm -hmm. and his dad wanted to be a comedian, but he had kids. So his dad took this job that was a safe job and then he got fired from it. And then their whole life growing up, he had to like, he was struggling to get a job. They struggled to get along anyway. And Jim Carrey says, I realized you can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well try at what you do. Mm. Wow. Sorry. Okay. I'm done now. I promise. <laughs> no, 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 no. Cause I, <laughs> 
because I was curious um, how your passion for acting developed. Like, when did you come across it? What sparked your interest way back when? Um, I so actually, the because I was very shy and, and and introverted. And the first year that I was homeschooled, my sister and I were literal hermits. Like, mm. if we had to leave the house, we would break down in tears. And like the, I mean, the whole first year, I, we couldn't handle it. And we didn't want to go anywhere. Mom signed us up for groups and with friends. And we would just sit in the corner and not want to talk to anybody because we were scared. We were terrified of people after what they did. Mm-hmm. And then my mom said to go see. And this is a cool story because it came full circle. I was uh, to, basically this homeschool group. We'd go to see shows. Right. Mm-hmm. And I saw this show. And I think it was there were two shows that it was. It was one was Little Mermaid. One was the, the Frog Prince. And I was watching it. And I turned my mom and I said, Mom, I think I want to do that. She kind of laughed. She goes, Kelly, you can't even talk to people. Like, <laughs> you're not going to want to get in front of a stage in front of like 500 people. Like, no, 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 no. I think I really want to do that. I want to try it. And she was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. And I couldn't convince her. So I took the song um, Poor Unfortunate Souls from The Little Mermaid. Uh-huh. And I took my sister, my Beanie Babies, and I created the performance to it. And after that, she was like, all right, you know what? Why not? And so we found this homeschool theater and the first show they were doing was Aladdin. And I found this out later is they wanted me to have the part of the princess. And my mom was like, no, 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 no. This is her first show. She's not getting that big a part. Which I'm very <laughs> grateful for because I don't think I could have handled it. And then I got the princess's best friend. And um, like the first time I was on stage, it was terrifying. And then after that, it just grew a love. And the next role I got was the White Witch in the Lion Witch Wardrobe. And then a lead in Shakespeare. And then Wendy and Peter Pan. And then the, the theater I want to do after the homeschool theater, which airs at a homeschool theater, which I'm now directing at and running and teaching at, is East Valley Children's Theater. And mm-hmm. you know what I found out after I got, um, and my first audition, I got a lead role in that too. And I found out that theater that I was then working at yeah. was the theater that inspired me to act. Oh, that was wow. the theater that put on the Frog Prince and the Little Mermaid, and I got to then act there for three shows. Oh, and then I went on, and I did professional paid theater, and I also did to do film, and I did commercials and television and movies, and I just finished shooting a feature film, and... It's like kept going and going and going, but because of acting, I, I, it's a weird thing, but I've always been more comfortable in front of 500 people than in a group of three, like, because you're not yourself. You get to yeah. be someone else for a little bit and it's a little less scary in a way. <laughs> um, and even to this day, to this day, I still like, I, I didn't like anxiety hanging out with friends sometimes, but if I'm in front of like, someone's like, well, you're going to be on TV and millions will watch you. I'm like, oh, great. Perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm totally cool with that. Um, but because of acting and improv, and, and improv was a big thing, which is I think why I love to do it and teach it too, is because um, I realized life was just an improv conversation. That what you learn in improv of keeping a, a scene going and creating mm-hmm. a character and blah, blah, blah. Life is just improv your way through it. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I was able to just, like acting changed my life completely. Completely. And another thing that was great is, um, in the household I was in with abuse, you can't really express yourself. Mm-hmm. You always have to be at what their level of okay is. So you're always walking on eggshells. You can never be too happy or too sad or too mad. You have to make sure it's okay for them. Mm-hmm. But the first time I went on stage and I was the white witch and I was furious and sad and angry and happy and mad. And I got up, on, I got up and I bowed and the weirdest thing happened people started clapping and this was like a girl who came from a house where you were reprimanded for stepping out of line and I could express everything that I was never able to say through someone else and people said good job and Mm -hmm. I liked it and I think because I kept going and I kept you know learning and now again I'm in a wonderful situation you know I was saying I've never been more blessed because my we we laugh with each other so much in this house and we keep each other up laughing and we, you know, and when we fight with each other, we talk it out and we work it out and we cry with each other and we laugh with each other and we're mad with each other and we work it out. And it's such a normal, healthy situation, which I feel like most people don't really realize is, you know, they people take for granted in a way because they're, it's just normal. They're used to it. And there are so many things that because this is almost a new thing, I'm just so great. And I've had friends who are like, you know, I've become more appreciative of my parents. Like I didn't, you know, my parents were like, whatever, until I started hanging out with you. Mm-hmm. And then I realized, wait a second, I guess dads aren't always there. 
you know, and I guess, you know, like these things. So she's like, I, she, they, my friends have developed like really close relationships now with their families, like because of what you went through and because of how you are with your mom and your sister, everyone, I realized I wanted that. And I realized that I, you know, took this all for granted and that I wanted to appreciate them more and stuff. And so it's kind of, it's just like a, just a, I live a beautiful, wonderful life. And, mm-hmm. and I just, I, I, you know, there's hard days and, but nothing's as hard as what we went through yeah. <laughs> earlier and, and it just, I used to always be looking ahead, you know, like it, in an abusive situation, you always have to think about what the next day is going to bring mm-hmm. because you can't think about where you are in life because it's so depressing and it's so sickening, like that that's what you're living in. Yeah. And the coolest thing happened is I realized I was in such a rush to do things. And now I'm like, I'm still doing things, but I'm enjoying my life so much. I realized when's the next time I'm going to live in a house with my entire family? Mm-hmm. When's the next time I'm going to have all my friends where I can just drive to see them? When's the next time I'll do a show at this theater? When's the next time I'll do a film with this person? Like I'm appreciating every little thing, even being able to take a shower in my shower because I appreciate everything life brings because there was so much part of my life that, that was, was terrible. I have to say, I mean, it wasn't yeah. all terrible. You know, I had my mom, my sister and everything. And, and, you know, you make do, and as a kid, you don't know what's normal or not. So that's just normal to you. But now I'm older. I'm like, Oh, that wasn't right. Um, <laughs> But I just, everything that happens to me, I, I just thank God for, I, I am so grateful. I make sure when I get up every morning to count the things I'm grateful for, the things I'm appreciative for, the people I have in my life to remember that because it's just a wonderful, it's just, it's like magic. It's like Disney magic. That's beautiful. Yeah. And, and that, I, I love that, that, uh, you know, the people around you notice, um, I get, I mean, your appreciation, but you know, that, that comes from now being able to relax in the moment, right? Instead of um, having to be so tense and and walking around and having to, um, you know, always worry about what's going on around you. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Having to control yourself in relationship to, uh, your, the situation that you're in, right? And then the freedom to yeah. be able to be yourself and to sink into the moment without having to like worry about the repercussions of how you might act or what you might say, et cetera. Right. And then people can exactly. see that and realize, you know what, there is a lot of great stuff in my life and, and it's beautiful to appreciate. I love that. Yeah. And yeah. it's also like, you know, we're not a rich family and we're not like, you know, have mansions and TVs and cars, <laughs> but it's like, I have an old, I might have my own mom's old car, a 99 Toyota Camry. And I love that thing. And most people are like, aren't you mad that you don't have a good car? I'm like, I'm happy I have a car. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm happy I'm able to, you know, there are times I didn't have groceries and there were times that I didn't have vitamins. And I'm like, you know what? I have food in my house. It's pretty great. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just, oh, oh, I just, even now I just think about my life and I'm, I'm just grateful. And I owe all of that. Every moment that I'm spending right now to my mom, who just tirelessly fought for us in a house, not only did she have to raise us as basically a single mother, Mm -hmm. but she had to fight against an abuser and protect us at the same time and wonder if she was doing the right thing. And she's just, I cannot express to you how amazing she is, how phenomenal of a person she is. And it's, it makes me so mad because I she's like I don't want to be on camera on the interviews and stuff and I'm like yeah. but people need to know who you are. Mom. You're <laughs> sick. She's like no one cares who I am. I'm like oh, I can't. Like, I just yeah. I owe every moment of my life and my happiness to her. And of course she drives me crazy. It's not like you know we like have like a magical you know we we're yeah, mom and yeah. daughter still, but <laughs> it's real life. Right? I, she, exactly yeah yeah. Um, this disclaimer there, but you know she's it's just has gotten my sister and I, she never gave up. She never said once like, oh, my daughter's autistic about my sister and my life is over and ruined. She was like, my daughter's autistic. Great. I'm going to go get some documentaries and some books and whatever I can find and the internet and research it. My daughter wants to be an actor. I don't know anything about acting. So she buys books and signs me up for classes and goes to seminars and watches those like behind the scenes videos with me because mm-hmm. she wants to do everything she can to support us. It was never once about you know, like she wanted us to do this. She was like, you want to do this? Okay. And I had this whole breakdown one year and I was like, what if I, 
am not going to be an actor? What am I not good enough? What if I change my mind? She goes, and then I'll support you. And I was like, shook. And, um, yeah. and she goes, you could turn around tomorrow and say, I want to, you know, be a garbage man. And I'll say, okay. And I'll get books on that and I'll support you until you can do it. You know what? That, that just reminded me of something that I've always found fascinating because, you know, uh, I, I mentioned to you earlier, my daughter is a photographer, right? Yeah. And so, you know, when she was a teenager and, and she was really throwing, throwing herself into photography, really, you know, passionate and enjoying it, you know, and I'm, you know, supporting her, figuring things out, watching things with her, you know, having mm-hmm. conversations with her, listening to her, just having a great time with her. But you would go out and, you know, and, and somebody outside the family, you know, w- would ask um, what she's into. We just, you know, she's really into photography. Oh, she's going to be a photographer. You know, yeah, it has to be the thing, right? And mm-hmm. and you know, to try and explain to them that I will happily throw um, all my energy and support and everything into her photography, and then you know, if a month from now her interests change, that's totally okay. Like, yeah, just would not get that because I'm not supporting the photography; I'm supporting my daughter. <laughs> yes, that's the biggest thing. And like, I had. Like my, because of my father, I had, to, I had to fight for every class I took. And so, you know, I had a friend who was like, oh, I just take acting classes because I want to try it. And I was like, I had to fight and knew I wanted to do it for a living. So it was like a hard thing. Like when I was like, mom, what if you're disappointed in me? She goes, I'm only disappointed in you if you're not happy. Mm-hmm. I want you I'm to be happy in life. Like it's yeah. not about, it was, I don't care if you're an actor. I don't care if you're a singer. I don't care. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you're a banker. Okay. If you're happy, then I'm happy. And that's like, Oh, it's such, ah, oh, it's, ah, oh, ah, oh, no words, just, ah. Oh. <laughs> because, you know, that's, <laughs> to be able to get up and enjoy um, what you do each day is just such a, a life-changing thing versus all the expectations mm-hmm. that, you know, we know can get, um you, you know, that, that conventionally get yeah. placed on, on people, on children, but even on adults. And, you know, hence the infamous, you know, midlife crisis of people who are, are all mm-hmm. of a sudden, you know, uh, I've been following this path and doing what was expected of me all this time. And I am mm-hmm. not really happy. Or like those movie, those movie yeah. cliches where it's like, exactly. it's not my dream parent, it's your dream. And then yeah. like dramatic turn away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I see my mom always taught me this since I was a kid and it was you find something you love to do you find a way to make money doing it and you never work a day in your life mm-hmm. yep so true yep um speed I think we pretty much hit this question <laughs> <laughs> but I'll just ask in case you have anything else to add um about uh, teaching acting to kids and performing at parties and events I was uh Curious about how you found your unschooling lifestyle influencing the work you do with kids. I think we hit that pretty well, but is there any other? Um, yeah, I mean, just reiterating the fact that kids are people, kids yeah. are tiny people and treat them like people. And I, you know, it's so hard for me when I see parents who, you know, they want to steer their kids in one certain direction. Let them discover, let them be kids, you know, let them be humans, let them make human experiences and discover what they like on their own. Um, be, being open to change and growth, like always with kids, the things are, they're young, they're always changing and growing and moving and running around Mm -hmm. and just not, you can't fight it. You just got to accept it and go like, all right, I guess we're doing this now. Um, embrace the difference in people, not just in kids, but in people you meet, embrace things that are different and you never know what people go through in their lives. You never know what someone's gone through um, or been through. And so if someone falls down, always help them up, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. People oh. always say to me, they say, you know, I don't know why. Like, I'll see someone on the street and I'll just give them all the money in my wallet. Or like there was an autistic kid actually was doing a face painting event. And the mom was like, oh, they're autistic. And my sister's autistic. So I started talking to her about her special interest. And all of a sudden she wanted like three face paints. And the mom was amazed she goes she's six years old I've been trying to get her to paint her face at these events for since she was a baby and she would never do it and you're the first person she's ever let like touch her with paint Mm -hmm. 
because I didn't expect her to be a certain way. I was just like, this is who she is. Let's get to know who she is. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, people meet me and because I'm so positive and, and like, they're like, they're like, you were abused and you had all this stuff going on and you have this in your, you know, you were homeschooled and stuff. I'm like, yeah, you know, but because of that, because of what I went through, it's made me a kinder and more generous person. It's made me think more about other people, you know, mm-hmm. that makes sense. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Well, but, I think it does. Be, your your point that you never know what people have gone through, right? Exactly. If someone has a bad day and they're mad open. at you and they, yeah, they honk at you on the freeway. Mm-hmm. You don't know what happened. They could have just signed divorce papers. Mm-hmm. They could be going to their mom's funeral. They could just be a jerk and, you know, be, be honking at you. But, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, if you see someone and they're struggling with something, depression, anxiety, anything like that, if you don't understand it, go to someone. Go to that person and say, hey, what can I do for you? I don't know what you're going through. How can I help you? Because I care about you. Or if it's just a stranger and you want to help them out. With kids, with adults, with elderly people, embrace people's differences no matter where you go. You know, you can decide if those differences are for you or not. And then you can, you know, spend more or less time with them accordingly, of course. But Mm -hmm. people are going to be people. And I think the... The most fascinating thing, and the thing I always say is that if someone's really neurotic, I'm like, oh, I'm going to use that for a character. Ah. <laughs> I'm going to, when I play a character like that, like I have a character I played and I was like, this is just like so-and-so. And I channeled that person when I played it. Yeah. And I have this, um, I'm going to uh, film a video this week um, that's like a, a parody of this, this Kardashian character. Mm-hmm. And um, because I've, you know, you and my mom like watches that show, and I've seen, I've met people who are just like like that. I'm like, how do you live? But instead of being like, you know, trying to change, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna take what they just did. And I'm gonna use it in like a character that I do. And you know, you can always learn something from someone. Oh yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. Now I'm curious, what stands out for you as you look back on your unschooling years now, like from your perspective today? Uh, what do you most appreciate about living unschooling growing up? 100% the most wonderful thing about being unschooled that I will fight to the death about is that I was able to pursue what I loved because I loved it. Mm-hmm. You know, when I started going towards acting, we did, you know, basic math and then we do acting lessons and watch classic movies. And she'd take me to acting classes and all that stuff like, most people, they don't get to really learn what they love and want to do until college. Yeah. But I was like 13, 14. And my mom was like, okay, let's do it. Let's go for it. Because of that, I was able to do so many shows and films because I could just push school into the evening instead of the morning. <laughs> um, you know, that kind of stuff. And it was, it was honestly the thing I'm most grateful for because I see kids today and they they go to school and then they also do rehearsal and then they also have homework. And I'm like, how do they breathe? Yeah. You know, my, my, I had the time to do what I loved. I had the time to learn what I loved and to appreciate it and to find out. Like I have friends who are like switching majors because they're like, wait, I don't really like this, but I got to learn if I did or didn't like it. My mom, like my sister loves to draw. So my mom was like, okay, we'll do art classes and art lessons. And I'll take you guys wherever you need to go to get that done. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to focus on what we love to do. And what's important to us over what society says we should do. Of course, we still learn the basics of math and reading and, you know, science and all that stuff. But, you know, obviously we're like, mom, we don't care about like advanced, extreme, super califragilistic, expialidocious algebra. Like, <laughs> I'm never probably going to use, I want to get a calculator or go to Google if I have to do that. You know what I'm like? I'll learn it now and I'll forget it in a week. But because of that, she was like, okay, well, I'm going to teach it to you. And then, you know, found out we just didn't care about it. And we went more into acting and into art and into, you know, so we learned the basics of what we need to know, but we're able to celebrate what we love to do. Yeah, exactly. Because those things that, um, what, what you would remember are the things you actually need to use, <laughs> right? Uh-huh. <laughs> day in and day out. So day day, I had to do like multiplication and I'm like, I had to do multiplication the other day and I just pick up my phone and I just, that a calculator exactly. you know like that <laughs> this is right in your hand now so <laughs> now as a grown unschooler what piece of advice would you like to share with unschooling parents who are just starting out on this journey 
gosh. Don't do it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Turn back an hour. Now. Don't. <laughs> Drop them off at the orphanage. No, no. Um, um, guess what I've said the whole time as kids are people. Yeah. Um, embrace them for who they are. They're not going to love everything you do, and you're not going to love everything they do, and that's okay. They're going to be into things you didn't care about, and you're going to try and get into things that you cared about, and they don't like it. And that's okay. Just love your kids for who they are. And that's like the most important. I think anyone unschooling or not, you know, I see a lot of people who, who don't have that and don't do that, but kids are tiny people. Just your job as a parent isn't to do things perfect. It's to help them grow and learn. It's to support them. It's to lead them into a, a healthy life path. Um, and that's all you can do because eventually your kids are going to grow up and they're going to go out on their own. So if you're unschooling, at least you have that time with them to make that difference. So. Yeah. I love how that message has, has, you know, come through in so many of the questions in all our conversations, because that's what it comes <laughs> down to, right. You know, yeah. we're, we're and that's people a huge in a relationship. Yeah. And that's what made a huge difference for me in my life. Uh-huh. Wow. So. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today, Kelly. I had so much fun. Of course, thank you. I'm I'm completely honored you wanted to speak to me about like unschooling and stuff. And I'm like, oh wow, okay, yeah, sure. Because normally it's like like my mom did all the work in the school. You know, I just like learned from her. Um, but could I give myself a quick plug, really quick? Oh, yes. Before we go, where's the best place for people to go. connect with I you know, online? In case you wanted to like check out any of my work or my YouTube channel or I have links to films I've done and projects, um, you can find me anywhere online at Kelly Nicole 515 on Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, on my YouTube channel, Kelly Nicole 515 or Miss Kelly Nicole. And I post like just funny vlogs. I hope they're funny. Um, and <laughs> and um, I'll post links to work that I do and yeah, I'd love to um, everyone to see that, and that'd be great. And I work really hard, and I'm proud of what I do. So there we go. <laughs> and I will definitely include links to all that stuff in the show notes. <laughs> thank you, Pam. You're wonderful. And I wanted to say thank you so much for doing this podcast, because I know that if you were my mom started, she would have been religiously listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks very much. And thanks very much for sharing your experience. I know a lot of parents appreciate hearing you know, from people who've grown up in that lifestyle, right? It helps them to, uh, to, to hear what other uh, kids think looking back. So that's awesome. Thanks so much for sharing your experience, Kelly. I'm just, I'm glad I can help. And have a lovely evening. Thanks for listening. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash podcast. While you're there, be sure to check out the first book in my Living Joyfully with Unschooling series, Free to Learn, Five Ideas for a Joyful Unschooling Life. In it, I share the five paradigm-changing ideas that most help me better understand unschooling. Reviewers have said, a quick read, but packed with ideas that challenge the dominant paradigm of our failing approach to learning, this little gem makes an excellent argument for unschooling. And... I was rather doubtful about this book, as I had never heard of the author, but after reading it, I wish that I had read it years ago. I hope you find it helpful too. Free to Learn has also been translated into French and Spanish. Until next time, have fun living and learning with your family.